Hello again, Saints. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to another Thursday night Bible study where we are going over the doctrine of who God has called us to be in Christ. And we are at a very vital uh, point in our education here, edification. <laughs> uh, but we are looking at Romans chapter 16. Romans 16, and this is lesson 29. Romans 16, <clears throat> lesson, six, lesson 29. And we are looking at um, the, when, when Paul says here, he says, it's him, him that is of power to establish you. Him that is of power to establish you. And then, um, and then we're looking at the perfect and in the power is what we're to be established in. And that's a lot to say there um, by, um, not too many stretches in a sense, because the thing about it is that um, when you look at what Paul is laying forth, what Paul is laying forth in Romans 16, Paul is is, is ending the um, the capstone doctrine, if you will, there, and he and, and he's putting the um, finishing touches on on what what he's been uh, given onto the saints for their establishment and establishment. And when he told the saints in the beginning, to the end that ye may be established, and then he's talking to the strong in the faith, he, he, he's saluting the brethren and sisters there in the Lord and, um, and, and giving on to them that they ought to be also like-minded. But then when he gets down to verses 19 and 20 and, and so on, he explains to them that I would have you to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And we, when we looked at that before, we saw that um, the God of peace, the doctrine of the God of peace working effectually within us, will bruise Satan under our feet when we are wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And when we be the perfect, and this is where it's getting to, when we be the perfect, in him, perfect in knowledge, perfect in his understanding. Be ones that, and we're going to look at the verses, be ones that are, uh, operate upon that upon his love, the more excellent way. That's the whole point in the perfecting there, that the saint himself may be brought up with this spiritual mind and educated up there where he is uh, perfect. That we'd be no more children. And, and, you know, I hear people say all the time, oh, so you have to reach a certain level of education? You ask your father that. You ask your father, wait, the, the verses that were given, that we'd be no more children, tossed to and henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with, uh, by the slight of men and all these different things, carried about by, by every wind of doctrine. But you see... The, uh, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that you be, you, you, we be brought up, or as they say, grow up in him in all things. And again, it's not my level of education or my level of edification that I'm trying to bring someone up in. It's up to the saint themselves if they desire to be, to be uh, a sons, to be sons and, and daughters in Christ. There's no set standard by me, myself, or, um, well, I'll just speak for myself here, that um, th th there are some that, that are babes and, and some have different different levels of growth in their understanding and in the knowledge. And, when, and, and the word, the term level is not something that, that, that I have my specific level that a person, well, he's level one, he's level two. Your father is the one that judges you. Your father is the one that when he says over in, in Proverbs 23, when he talks about the idea that, that uh, my heart can rejoice, yea, my reins can rejoice when thy lips speak the right things. And, and, and the Lord himself told the apostles, I have many things to say unto you, but ye are not able to bear them now. But there would be a time when they would, and there's a time when we could. And but let's just get to the to, to the verses. Didn't want to get off on, on that issue there, but let's come over and look at Romans 16, 25. 
Romans 16, verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but is now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the everlasting God made known to all nations for obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ our Lord forever. Amen. Now, you know, when we're looking at when we get into the issue here about the to God only wise, you're going to see that God is designed that he be the, that he is the only wise. But Satan also took ran away with wisdom. And, and we see where that led him. And then also man himself, he, he, he assumes his his wisdom is supreme, is supreme in the in the universe. But look at um look at what I'm after is now to him that is of power to establish you. The the idea is that we've been given the excellency of the power, and it's in his word. The excellency of the power is designed to work effectually within us. And this is the point, folks, of what I'm after here. When we operate upon that power, we will defeat Satan. We will, the power, God has given you everything you need. The armor, the word of God is the power, is, is, the, um, uh, is the all in all that God is working with today. That is his, etern that his eternal power working effectually within us. But many times people today, all they see when, they, when you say power of God, they only just look at the justification unto eternal life aspect of the power of God, as we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, that is mentioned uh, what happened the moment we believed in what his death accomplished for us um, and the victory that there, that there is uh, over death for on our behalf. And But there's more to the power that the Lord wants to make, make uh, known and, and, and wants to uh, show through us, but only the saints that are allowing themselves to allow his word to work effectually within us. We have to do this with the selfless mind, with the spiritual mind, and only a spiritual mind and a saint operating upon selfless love will be able to um, operate upon this doctrine. Because again, as I said, in the prior studies, the only way you're going to properly operate upon his holy word, <coughs> excuse me, is by operating upon selfless love. I'll come over to 2 Timothy, 2 Sec, um, Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, look at verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, notice this, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Notice what God has given us. We always just only looking at just the idea of justification unto eternal life. When this says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but this is what he's given us, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That power there you're going to see is God's all God, God's what God is doing today. All that he is doing, the excellency of the power is to be brought forth by us with his word and we can put that on display as sons and daughters in Christ and when we are operating upon this it works to a perfecting of the saints in knowledge in wisdom in judgment because when he sees things he's going to judge it based upon a spiritual mind and operate upon the mind of Christ look at um look at verse um Verse 8, yeah, verse 8, 
Be not thy, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Now see, being ashamed of the gospel is not preaching it. And some would say, well, yeah, I'll go out there and I win. we win souls. We go door knocking. Okay, well, what's your motivation? Someone would say, what are you talking about? What's my motivation? I'm saving souls. And I'm talking to them who, I'm not talking about the Jehovah Witness that go door to door, the Mormons that go door to door and, and, and are lost and do not understand how a man is, how a man can obtain the righteousness of God because they don't have an understanding of that at all. I'm talking about even them who, who understand how a man is justified unto eternal life and how he, he is declared righteous in the sight of God. What I mean by the motivation, if you're only just winning souls just to get someone into the church building because your numbers are low, then that's not that's not the right motivation. That's not the right motivation. That, that, that's not operating upon a spiritual mind. When when you pass just the people on the street, I'm talking about driving driving a vehicle, the ones that are in front of you, the one you're driving past. If it doesn't grip your heart when you to to, to understand and know them that they are lost or, or could be, then it hasn't affected you because. It does your father. Your father's affected by it. That that they that they cannot hear. But look at um and, and again when we're looking at this here, um, some can be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. But Paul says, "Be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, according to the power of God." Notice, be partaker of the afflictions of the gospel, and then he uses then he says, "According to the power of God," because. The power of God, we can allow it to work effectually within us when we do go through the afflictions. But the only way you're going to go through the afflictions is you can't be ashamed. Because when you're ashamed, just as, and we'll, and we'll see, just as the Lord told uh, the apostles over in John 7, verse 6, when he said, and I quoted it last week, <laughs> when, when he said that, um, the world, the world hateth me because I testify of it, but it doesn't hate you yet. You know, your time is all, all away. And then he said, the idea, he said that the world hateth me because I testify of it. But when the apostles testified of the, of the world, they hated them too. But y y we can't be ashamed. If you, if you are ashamed, you're not going to go through the afflictions. The power of God is not going to be put on display through you. It, it, it's not going to happen. That's why Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. We'll look at those when we, if we get a chance. Look at verse 9. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was, in, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And again, that's all people see about uh, the power of God is that they only, it, you know, he justified me and I'm in him and not according to works. And, and that's all they see. But they don't see uh, his desire that they live on to him. Look at um, look at First Thessalonians uh, chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse 9. But it's touching brotherly love. Uh, you need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. See, the, the love of God desires to increase. The love of God desires to to grow and because that's the way it's designed to do. That's how your father loves. He doesn't have a limit on, on how he loves or how much uh, he loves or who he loves. He's not, he's not um, preferring and he wouldn't have you to either. But I'm showing this here because as I said in the out, outset of the, the study there, God desires that we grow and not just we grow uh, in knowledge 
but that that knowledge grows in selfless love, that we learn the perfecting. And that perfecting, as I said before, when you see the more excellent way being spoken of over 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, well, actually 12, and, and at the end of the um, chapter it says, but yet I show unto you a more excellent way. And then he talks about charity. Because that is the more excellent way. That, that's the capstone of the Son operating upon God's will. Operating upon a spiritual mind. Because that's the capstone of God's essence is love. That's the capstone of the Lord and Savior's essence. When he was here on the earth, he showed forth selfless love. He was here as one that serves. And he came for the nation, for the world. That selflessness. And again, when he gave over to his apostles about that good shepherd, about that shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep, well, we are to operate upon selfless love also. Whereas we will lay down our life for the Lord and Savior's sake, for the Father's sake, for the ministry's sake, for the body's sake, the, the, the members, the people. But let's move on. Come over to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1. Uh, let's take a look at verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your, your work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father, and God and our Father. Now you see, he says, remembering without ceasing. Then he says, your work, your work of faith, the work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope. Now, if you're if it's a labor of love, how can love be laboring unless you're working love? Unless you are taking, just say you take the word love itself, and and, and you and you say, well, this person is laboring with love, in love, with love. And that's that's actually what happened and what they were doing. They were growing in the love of God, the selfless love. They operated upon God's love. They operated upon the Lord's love. They were perfect. They were perfect. And a lot of people use the word perfect to assume a perf perfect is considered um, that there is no flaw at all. But this perfect here. Is the is and there is also a perfecting of a saint. A saint can operate upon. Um, he can be a man of understanding, and he can operate upon a perfecting mind. But a perfect mind, but he can also continue to grow, and grow more, and grow more. He can he can abound in love. That love that he operated upon uh, a week prior. He can perfect that and continue to, to prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. But look at uh, verse, verse 4. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election of God, our gospel came not unto you in word only, but notice this here, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we, we were among you for your sakes. Notice selflessness. It's about their sakes. They learned that. They became followers of Paul and of the Lord. And, and they themselves saw his selflessness. They themselves operate upon it. You know, today people, they'll, uh, I forgot they call it play it back or something like that, where they, uh, if a person's at a drive through they'll say, hey, I want to pay for the person's order behind me. And then he sees it and he pays for the person's order behind him. And, and so on, it's supposed to keep a chain of, of paying it back. So by the time the other guy gets there the next day, someone's buying his lunch also. But the idea is that they, that's a carnal way of showing a form of love. That's not what this is here. Selfless love is the love that the Lord operate upon. And notice when he says, but also in power that they didn't just get the word only. But it came onto them in power. They operated upon 
that power. When we looked last time about the power and how it's looking at the similarity of that power that Adam gave up in the in the garden, that dominion and, and all those things that that um that we have today. We have a the not Adam's dominion, not even the apostles' dominion that they operate upon that we looked at last time. We looked at the Lord, the uh, the Lord gave the apostles, he said, power over all the enemy that there's nothing they can do to, to hurt them they had dominion at that time they they had dominion over beasts scorpions all, all kind of things they had dominion over them that isn't that what the what adam operated upon they could heal the sick raise the dead and and, and do all kind of things but we too we don't operate upon that aspect of it but the power we operate upon is the inward man strengthening and we're going to see the verses in a little bit but there's nothing that satan can do in this dispensation to hurt us either because we have the armor we have the power be strong in the lord and in the power of his might it's over in ephesians chapter six and that's what happens there but look at um uh verse um Verse 6, and ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word of much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. And notice, follow, they became followers, followers with selfless love, labor. All the things he mentioned about them was the same things that the Lord operated upon and Paul and the apostles operated. Notice it says in verse 3, your work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope. That's what they operate upon. Look at um, verse uh, 7. So that ye were examples to all that believe. Notice all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out not, not the word um, only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. For they themselves show, of us, uh, show us what manner of entreating we had in you. And how ye turn from God, turn to God from idols to serve the true and living God. Now, in the, in the next uh, few minutes, we're going to go over just a little bit of the the Satan's power, you know. And as he said here, he said that um, turn how ye in verse nine how ye turn to God from idols. To serve the true, living and true God. Notice the service there. It, it's a competing wisdom to get the saints or the unjustified to serve one or the other. And in God's God's um, what He would do like to do is get all men saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. To translate them out of darkness and into light and sanctification and, and adoption and to be a Bible teacher. Satan wants their souls and wants them to be ones that are propagating his will. Instead of when something happens, if someone broke your computer and you fly off the handle, um, Satan would have you to fly off the handle, say certain things. And, and do other things and then propagate it. Your father would have you to bless, judge, and operate upon selfless love. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 now, verse 8. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. Notice stand fast in the Lord, not stand fast in this world or a little bit of wor a world, a little bit of the Lord. Look at verse 9. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith you, we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day and praying exceedingly that we might see your face. Um, uh, oh. See your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Notice the question mark there. Now God himself and our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ direct our way into unto you 
and the Lord make you to increase and abound. Notice both of those words in love, not just abound in it, but increase in it. One toward another and toward all the men, all men, even as we do, do you do toward you. To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now, what I'm after here is verse verse 10 when he, when he says, and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. And remember who these Thessalonians were. We just read it. Who they were. They were examples. And he wants, still wants to perfect which is lacking. He's not saying that um, they're, they lack as the Corinthians and Galatians. But if you're abounding and increasing, aren't you, aren't you lacking something? Well, of course. But it's in love. He's saying that he wants them to to grow more that they don't, that it's never enough. Selfless love is what he's saying here. Now, um, notice he says in verse 13, to the end, they, that to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness. See, that, that unblameable word is another word, perfect. That's another perfect word or perfect word being used there in holiness before God. Now, and that's why I said in looking at what we're dealing with here in Romans 16, you're dealing with Paul making mention to about to, now to him that has the power to establish you. And he talks about according to my gospel. But what he want him to be established in is the ones that are strong in the faith, that they be ones that can also operate upon that power, that they be perfect themselves operating upon selfless love and we're going to see that there but it, but again the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet ought to um we ought to rejoice in that we might not think that this is a uh really a big deal in a sense but this is this is the all in all you this is the point the stage uh here and I'm not saying that this is it, that, that, that that's all there is. I'm saying that this is when an, the educated education starts. If, if a son is operating upon a spiritual mind, because he, he ought at this point understand what is wise, what is good, what is and what is simple, what is evil. He ought to, he ought to be able to understand and discern that. So just as the Thessalonians increased more, a son at this point ought to be able to operate upon a selfless mind. He ought to know when he hears something, he should say, hmm, now that man over there said this, but I'm not going to be enticed. I'm not going to be enticed with the words of man. I'm not going to be enticed, by, beguiled by enticing words. That's not of this world, but it's of, I mean, that's not of God, it's of this world. But these are things that equity, that judgment, that, that the wisdom ought to be utilized at this point here. And if a son is not operating upon that, and he cannot discern it. And many people I've talked with this, I've talked to, uh, about this. And just say, for instance, if it's 20 people that I've talked to about the power, I've talked to about the perfecting, uh, the God of peace, Bruising Satan under our feet with the doctrine. And, and I would say if it's 20 of them, I talked to 18 of them, they just looked right at me. It didn't affect them at all. They weren't ready to discern, to be able to discern what was being said at that time. But there were two, just say, who saw it and said, wow. Because understanding that what God is, is, is given for us at this point here, that we be not the simple over in, in, in verse 17, but bruising Satan under our feet ought to be something that we ought to understand that it is the word that's going to do it, the armor, 
There's nothing Satan can do against us or the power uh, policy of evil can do against us in this dispensation to 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 uh, hurt our spiritual life unless we allow it, unless we stop operating upon God's word. But let's let's move on. Come over to Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Let's look at verse eight. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with, notice this, all power. As I said before, we're going to look at that power issue. Satan, the one he, you know, the, the power that he, that, that he works with there being the prince of the power of the air. Um, with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceit, notice this, with all deceivableness, with unrighteousness, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You notice what that all deceivableness, that's because they, the people, the unsaved, were never, were always deceived. They're, they were never, they never came unto the knowledge of the truth. Well, they never came unto salvation. Now, we can be deceived, and Paul's word says that, but this is all deceivableness that that satan came in and and unrighteousness but uh notice the you notice his power and if his power is deceiving people with signs lying wonders how this shows you how the word of god can help you because if you're led by his word you'll know that that's not truth you'll know the things you see on tv today and the things you hear people say are not God's truth. God doesn't desire that you be uh, have so much care for those things. Now come over to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1 verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. See, that's Paul's desire. You know that goes out for every saint. And you know, as I said before, and, and 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 you know, I hate to even get back off on this here because when I said about the people talk about different levels, and I'm I'm mentioning our adoption. We have people just I was just eating, you know, a guy emailed me. And said, um, he was talking about the whole sonship issue, that he doesn't like the word, and it's not even in the King James. And, and um, you know, we're already um, complete. And I said, yes, but not a complete according to knowledge. Well, we don't have to have a certain level. We don't have to, and all this other stuff. But notice what Paul is saying, that ye might be filled, uh, filled, uh, this filling, every saint could say, could should be able to say, God doesn't fill your head at once as soon as you become justified. These saints, all, all saints know that they should not be the same saint doctrinally that they was five years ago. And here it says that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding there's growth that you might walk worthy of the lord unto all please notice all pleasing you have you have pleasing the lord but then you have pleasing them again and then another please then pleasing them again being fruitful notice this in every good work so not just one work but every good work and notice this and in increasing in the knowledge of god well you might as well just throw that out for those that, that believe that. And I'm not even going to bring that up again because, you know, a people should be able to get that. When you see verses like this in verse 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. But, but see here, 
strengthen with all might according to his power. So God would have us to be strengthened with all might, but that's according to his might. His power. Notice this is what God would have us to be, but notice after he talked about filled with all knowledge and, and wisdom and spiritual understanding, increasing in the knowledge of God, why is the word power used here? Why is the word power used over there not to him that is of power to establish you? That's because the power is, uh, in this dispensation, is the word of God working effectually within us. And working effectually means it is that our, our being filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding and walking worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, that is the effectual working of his power. Look at um, verse 12, giving thanks unto God, unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Notice, you notice what, when we were in Adam, there was a power, the power of darkness, because it took a man that God created and said that man can have no, he can be separated from God. That instead of it being as it was in the garden with that fellowship, man being God's help me, the power of darkness says that, um, that God's creation can, can disobey his salvation and be, and be apart from him. Um, Come down to verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, hope of glory, the hope of glory, whom we preach, notice this, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, where unto I labor, strive, striving according to his working which worketh in me mightily. Now, Paul is teaching, he's preaching, he's warning that he may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Now, we should know what that means by now, but you see that, you see that the power of Satan also, you see spiritual wisdom and the verses we looked at, spiritual understanding, increasing his, in his knowledge, increasing in his love, and then you see, oh, we've been delivered from the power of Satan. Because that's putting on display here God's power and what God's power is and that that can work through you. It, when you see verses over in, in, in uh, um, First uh, Corinthians, and when we see wisdom of God, but then we see man's wisdom, then we'll see again wisdom. Uh, f the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God and all these things. But then you see man assuming man can't discern it is foolishness unto him. That is power of God versus the power of Satan. But we too can put that on display today. We can put the power of God on display with us. And if that's the case, Who's Satan's foe? Who is his enemy? Well, the one that will live God in Christ Jesus is the enemy of Satan. Because that's why Paul says, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. There is power in that. And with the saint being perfect um, in his word. But come over to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter five. Oh man, I don't know how we get to all these verses here. Uh, verse five. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse five. Ye are the children of the light and children of the day. We are not the, of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch. 
and be sober. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that drink, uh, drink it, drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, put it on the breastplate of faith and of and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. There's a lot contained there. I'd like to go over every single verse, but I can't. <laughs> but, you know, notice he says, put it on the breastplate of faith and love. What is a, you know, a breastplate is one, someone puts that on in armor. That's what they put on in armor. But he, he talks about the light and, and then a day. He talks about the night and darkness. When we seen in Romans 13 about the uh, put on the armor of light. Here he's talking about let us be sober. Let us watch. When we seen all those watching out for Satan's uh, plan of evil against us. Be sober minded. Be awake, be, be not sleep. But again, that's that hope I mean, that, and that love is you're talking about the helmet and all these different things is for a saint going to battle. And that's what you see here. Saint going to battle. And um and and, and that's what uh he, he's actually showing here. Look at um verse let's Look at verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we be we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly for love i mean in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves now we exhort you uh brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble-minded support the weak be patient toward all men oh, i'm gonna stop that i read through there because i wanted to, i wanted you to see something here that when he talks about verse 11 um and edifying one another, even as ye do, ye do. Well, he knows that they do. But then he's going to say in verse 12, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. See, what he wants them to do, he doesn't want them to. And some people see this there, and, they, and, and this is their reason to say, oh, well, it should be a pastor anniversary days. That ain't, that ain't the knowing that he's talking about. He wants them to be edified. He, just I'll give you an example. At the end of 1 Corinthians, he tells them, he says, that they know the household of Stephanus, for they have addicted themselves to the ministry. And that's what the point is, is the ones that is that are addicting themselves to the ministry that are uh, strong in the faith, that, that the ones that need, uh, that are lacking, that they join themselves to them. But look at... Um, uh, comfort yourselves together, edify one another, even as you do. Um, yeah, and over you in the Lord. Look at verse 13. And it's to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Again, that love is growing. He wants them to esteem others for their work's sake in love. So look at verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Notice the warning again. That are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Satan desires that they be unruly. And verse 15, he desires they be this way as well. See that ye render evil none, that none render evil for evil to unto any man but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Notice he using the word uh, that Paul said to, over in the Romans, render to no man evil for evil, but follow that which is 
good. And then he says over here in um, um, uh, verse uh, uh, 16, rejoice evermore. And they ought to, they ought to rejoice because they are uh, they're going along with the will of God. They are they understand God's will for them, and and they're rejoicing. And we're going to look at the rest of that um, uh, chapter there in a second. But um, this perfecting that that God has given unto us, or that or that well, His Word is what He's given unto us. It's the saint desiring to be adopted by by the Father. That he desires to cry of a father, be educated by him, grow up in him, be perfect, be perfect in knowledge, in wisdom, in understanding. And only those, as I said before, who do not understand God's wisdom, understanding his will, they're going to say things like, well, what are you saying? Are you saying that... Um, uh, we're just scrubs and, you know, uh, see, God's word is designed to um, to be, I don't want to use the word infectious or copied. <laughs> it's designed to live within, within sons and daughters. I don't even want to use the word duplicated, but it's, his word is designed to every single word ought to be, if God... Well, he's not doing it in this dispensation, but that each word would be imprinted on our hearts. So someone to say, well, what does um, what does Proverbs chapter 14, verse 3 say? We got to be able to say, and then verse 4, and then verse 5, and verse 6, verse 7. We got to be able to, to just run it off the top of our heads because these are his words. These are your father's words words here and these words are power these words are designed to defeat satan to defeat the wiles of the devil to defeat the fiery darts of the wicked you can use god's word stand upon the good and not and not the evil be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil but let's move on come over to uh verse 20 now Despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. And you notice a lot of this kind of reminds you of Rome, well, kind of reminds me of Romans 12. Hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all parent, appearance of evil. When I say kind of reminds me of it, when you look at Romans 12, uh, verse, um, verse 9, and it says, uh, let, well, actually, at, well, verse 9, let love be without the simulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. And, and we've seen all that earlier. But look at uh, verse um, uh, verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace shall, I mean, peace, sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember when I said about that word blameless? That can also be used as perfect, perfect. And looking at the uh, uh, sanct the God of peace, notice the God of peace is used here. It was also used in Romans 16, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. Well, the God of peace is also sanctifying us holy. But it's done by his word. God's not individually just uh, sanctifying this person one-on-one -on -one and then that person one-on-one, -on -one, but skip past this person. Holy. Notice it's a whole, holy. It's not just in part, but whole. That you be, and that's, that's a filling. That's a filling up, perfecting right there. Look at um. That's why it says, "I pray God your whole spirit." That's perfect. Look at uh, uh Colossus three, Colossus three verse ten. And I put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of Him that created Him. 
Notice the new man, knowledge. The new man looks like the Lord and Savior. The, the Lord and Savior, the word became flesh. Put ye on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lust thereof. You notice that, that's why it says after the image of him that created him. That's godliness. Look, on, look at uh, verse 12 now. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy, beloved, Bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. You see all that love right there? All that is love is what you're taught to put on. Beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long. All those things are, are forms of selfless love. Look at uh, verse 13. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a Quarrel against another, even as Christ forgave you. So all notice this also do he. You see that identity? You see how you ought to be a follower of Jesus Christ here? And that's what he says here. As even as Christ forgave, so also do ye. Why? Why should they? Well, part of godliness is being light in the likeness. Of his thinking, his labor, and his ways. Look at verse 14. And above all these, notice it's more. And above all these, put on charity, which is the bond of what? Perfectness. See, many people, that's why I said here, perfectness, being perfect, is the saint operating upon all those things and that selfless love. You're going to see in the next verses, uh, I mean, about a few minutes, we're going to get to that That perfectness is selfless love. That's the capstone of the will of God and the way of God, the life of God and the word of God. And above all these, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the, notice this, peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. You know, when you look at this, and you say, wait a minute, there's that word peace of God again. That God, you know, it just doesn't say God. We've seen it over there in, in, in chapter, uh, in First Thessalonians chapter 5, and the very God of peace shall sanctify you. And we see this here, let the God of peace rule in your hearts. And then over in, in Romans 16, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. But why do all these things have to do with knowledge and wisdom? Every last one of these, one of these have to do with wisdom and sufferings. It, it all has to do with wisdom and the afflictions of the gospel. Because the ones going to be getting afflicted are ones that are going to desire to live godly being perfect, the bond of perfectness. The bond of perfectness operates upon selfless love. And um, look at verse 16. If you don't think so, look at this. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Notice, in your hearts. Look at um, Colossians chapter 4. Colossians 4, verse 12. Epaparus, who is one of you, servant of Christ, saluteth you always, laboring feverly for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. This is how he would have us to stand, perfect and complete. Some would say, wait a minute, I thought we were all complete. Well, we are complete, but we're not all complete in the will of God. We're not all complete or we're not all perfect in knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Now, come over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse 31. And this is what I was saying at the outset there about the more excellent way. Look at verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, but yet show I unto you a more excellent way. And some people, when they see that, all they're looking at 
is the spiritual gifts aspect of that. And um, the spiritual gifts aspect is not what Paul is really honing in on in, in uh, chapter 12, 13, and 14. And people think that's all it's talking about is spiritual gifts. But he's making mention because of the, he, he shows about the spiritual gifts and that was a temporary way and in part way to get things done temporarily to get his knowledge across to mankind. But then there's a time, appointed time of the Father, that all God's will and knowledge will be revealed to man. And that's why we looked at Ephesians chapter 4, when it talks about, and he gave some of prophets, apostles, and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That was the purpose. And wisdom and knowledge and instruction is also part of that and the perfecting of the saints to operate upon the power of god now come over to uh first corinthians 13. let's just take a look at uh the next chapter there first corinthians 13 look at verse 9. for we notice this know in part and we prophesy in part which of course that was the early church there prophesying. But that's a whole other subject. But when we when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Notice that which is perfect, perfect knowledge. But God desires that we too be perfect in knowledge. <laughs> when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You see. You see the growth. You see, Paul is showing them that there is a growth process. And God has a curriculum, as you see here, that he has. He desires that we be no more children. Now, look, come over to Philippians uh, chapter 1. And that which is perfect within them and that they be strong and perfect in love is what he was after and what he's after. Look at verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge in, and in all judgment. That ye may approve things that are excellent. That ye may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ. Now, uh, come over to chapter Three, but no, but wait, just hold your sec place there for a second. He says, in this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Remember, we see in the other verses that their love may increase and abound, and that their love may abound. Notice how many times Paul says this, that he wants their love to grow, that, oh, there's different levels of growth and love. Well, you see, here it is. You see here, God, uh, that, that God's love always grows. And more and more, notice, how can a person's love grow more in knowledge and judgment? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you how much it can grow. A person's love can grow for sport. A person's love can abound yet more and more for the game of golf. For the game of football, he might not just like professional football, but he might like college, and then he might grow and bound in high school, or maybe he even might love more teams, different teams. Your love can, can abound more and more in God's knowledge and in all his spiritual judgment. Notice, um, <clears throat> we'll come to chapter 3 now. Verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of, Jesus, of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded, and if any thing be ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Again, pressing toward the mark. Oh, there's a mark. You, are you, you're always pressing? Well, sure you are. For the high calling, you're all, you you're not reaching back, but reaching forward. Four, as to be perfect, to be perfect. 
um, but not be thus minded or otherwise minded, but be spiritual minded. Come over to Ephesians chapter one. I want you to take take a note to some things here. Look at Ephesians chapter one. Look at verse eighteen. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of his of the glory of the his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power, notice this here, to us word, that who believe according to the working of his mighty power. People when they see this, they only think this is talking about just justification unto eternal life. But notice this says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? And, and, and it's not to us uh, or for, uh, that, that's not saying that this is talking about those that believe because they believed it and that was power. But it's saying that to the ones that believe, that, that we know what is the exceeding gratefulness, greatness of his power to us according to the working of his mighty power. We can operate upon his power. You don't think so? Look at uh, chapter 3, verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the, gr of the grace of God, which is given me by the effectual working of his power. Now, the effectual working of his power, he just got through mentioning in chapter 3, he mentioned about sufferings and about love. He talked about that love there um, in verses uh, 17 on down. And, and um, you know, you, you don't have to, you know what, we'll look at that in, in a second, but... Um, yeah, we'll look at that in a second. You know, I just don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, but that power there, and I want you to see that, about that effectual working of, of his power that ought to work in us, and it could work into us, could work with us. And we're going to see how that is because, again, when you're dealing with this here, not to him that is a power to establish you. Paul says, according to my gospel. And all we see is Paul's my gospel. My gospel, according to the mystery. We don't see what being said to him that is a power to stop. If, if someone's of power, just say you have someone reigning, a reigning king that's in power. And he wants to take you and establish you. What do you think he's establishing you in? His power. And, and that, that's not establishing you in how to just get people justified unto eternal life. That is the power that he wants you to operate upon, his power. He is at war with Satan and, 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 and the evil men of this world. And you are too if you preach him. Yea, all that will of God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. When you see in Romans 12, when it talks about being a living sacrifice, that's the first time you get to be, uh, it being spoken about your enemies. If thy enemy uh, persecute you if he does this and uh, render evil, do not render evil for evil. Recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest because there's going to be ones that will when you're preaching him. Well, come on, let's move on. Uh, come over to uh, uh, stay here in Ephesians uh, 3. Look at verse 16 now. Ephesians 3, look at verse 16. That he will grant you, according to the riches of his grace, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's where it's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to be done, by his might. That's power. That's power there being spoken of. And But riches of his glory. And, and Paul is desiring that he would grant you, that we be granted this. But it's in the inner inner man. You want to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Now, that's power. And when you see um, 
all that's talking about, even over in, in Ephesians chapter 6, when it talks about that power, it talks about in verse 12, or verse um, 10, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You, you see might here. Look at uh, verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Notice it's in their hearts by faith. That ye be rooted and grounded in love. Now, that's how we ought to operate. That we ought to dwell in our hearts ought to dwell with the selfless love of God, ought to be dwelling in our hearts. That's what Paul is saying here. That's how we'll be strengthened. Notice how strengthened with might and then your hearts rooted and grounded in love is intertwining together. What, what do you think, um, what power of this world, and I'm talking about the powers, the, the, the rulers of this world, which one of them operate upon love when they're using their power or their might? It's not going to happen unless they spare some people for their own reason. Look at um, verse 18. <coughs> Excuse me. May able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ. It, you see that... The, how the fullness there is there, that there's, they want the saints not just to know the length of it, but to know the breadth and length of it. Not just those two, but to know the depth and the height of it. To know the love of Christ, because that's how Christ loves, operates upon, which passeth knowledge, passeth, you got knowledge and something passes that that ye might be filled with all the, notice this, fullness of God. There's, there is a degree of learning, folks, that a saint should desire to want to learn and know him. You don't have to. You can stand there and just be justified unto eternal life. You're not compelled to know him. You're not compelled to to want to serve him. You're not compelled to want to obey him and, and have him to be your father. You're not compelled to, to for that to, um, for that. No one's forcing that. But look at uh look at verse 20. This is what I'm after here. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Hmm. The power that worketh in us. Remember, when we looked at Ephesians 1, there we looked at Ephesians 1, um, and we seen, he says, which is the great, the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. And here you see uh, in verse 20, according to the power that worketh in us, it's the word, it's the love of Christ. It's the saint that perfects saint who has the word dwelling richly within him, he is now operating upon the mind of Christ and he's able to operate with selfless love. That's power. And again, there's nothing Satan can do. There's, Satan has no power. We have dominion on this earth with God's word. We're able to uh, preach the word in his stead. Look at uh, verse 21. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Now come over to Matthew 5 and we'll close. Come over to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew 5, verse 43. You have heard that it hath been said, um, yo, you have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor. Uh, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. See, what the Lord is telling the apostles, and, and you know, remember, this is, he's saying, it has been said, he had heard that it had been said, 
but he's given them corrective doctrine. But I say unto you, you know, the, the enemy, love your enemy, bless them that curse you. That's what Paul told us. That's what we're told over there. And he says, um, do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh the, his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. And notice this, for if ye love them which love you, what reward ye have? Do not even the publicans the same? In other words, you know, if you're going to pay a bill, someone they're going to say hello sir how are you yeah i'd like to pay my bill oh sure okay well thank you and then you go about your way there they're going to they're going to treat you with a greeting a love a saluting and things like that well what what the lord is saying is you ought to show love to all anyone can do that and and he said that's why he says what reward have ye look at verse 47 if you salute your brethren only what do you do? What do ye more than others? Because all, all do that. He wants them to be separate. He don't want them to do as the world does it. Do not even the publicans so. Look at verse 48. This is what I'm after. Be therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is. Notice this. Perfect. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, he's telling those apostles what perfectness is. Perfectness is, notice what was in the context, love. Operating upon selfless love. Not the love as this world operates upon, but your Father's love. His love is selfless. And he's explaining about how they ought to love and loving their enemy is something that this world does not understand. It's foolishness. I'm going to love a guy that just broke out my window? Well, not if you operate upon this world standards and, and their will. But if you operate upon his will, his will says, I know they broke your window, but bless. They broke your window, but uh, recompense things honest in the sight of all men and that's what we're we're taught to do that's how we operate upon a spiritual mind and, and, and it's a renewing and, and it happens to me daily folks i mean uh, daily the the verses are just coming up something that goes something happens the verses are just coming up they're they're um i know this way and i've lived this way all my life by the will of this world but now I'm operating upon a new mind. When I see things, it's God's word said do this. And that's the way I'm led. I'm led by that. And I'm not doing uh, being renewed because God said so. Selfless love of Christ that I'm taught has me to, to, to remind me. I knew, the, I knew the doctrine years ago. But it's, it, it, it reminds you when you love him with a selfless heart, his word will come come to mind. It will come to your mind because you, you have it dwelling richly within you. And once that renewing happens, he's conforming to the image of his son. His son was perfect. We also can be perfect in knowledge, wisdom, and in, in all godliness if we allow the word to work affection within us. The next time we're going to take a look at, uh, we're going to uh, probably finish up uh, with the uh, power issue here. When I said, when it's now to him, that is of power to establish you. Um, I'm, I'm leaning toward using, uh, looking at the um, the power of God versus the power of Satan. But maybe I will, in some aspect, uh, get more into that because I only use a couple verses here um, and maybe a couple last week on that issue. But probably do that next time but i want to thank everyone for um tuning in to another thursday night study and um until next time thank you